I mean, yeah, you, you mentioned we we have the next show coming up in one minute. We ran a little bit long, so we'll we'll have to go straight into the the five versus five crystal league action. Uh, I don't know if Tazik's around. If you are, pipe up. Let us know that you Yo. are. Yo, yo, you are good. Good. We don't even have to go look for you. Perfect. Perfect. Man. Yeah, just a just a little long on the art show stuff. <laughs> Nothing. Well, we crazy. went long on everything. We had. Yeah almost three three weeks of content mm -hmm. to really talk about so thank you for everybody who was patient enough as we got through it but we do have some crystal league content coming up right now do we have a name i'm getting you one okay okay well tazik how have you been dude i've been good it's been like what two weeks i think week and a half or so it's been pretty good the tournament very crazy so happy to see some little fives coming in now chill out a little bit after the uh you know oh, end it, game of 5v5 i have a very interesting match for us to watch let's go to durentin because it's durentin machu rpg guy Tutankhamun, common and the return of prince of death so I, I would like to see this as a, a version of the purple cobras that we have seen in the past. They have made it to the finals before. They were actually my pick to win the most recent CLC. They did not have the best luck, and they have now switched up their group just a little bit. Let's see what we got here, guys. I would say switch it up a lot. They got Prince of Death back on his arcane tank, so they swapped Garenton to Healer, which is, you know, Druidic Staff is very different than arcane tank, which is what he got to the tournament playing. So let's see how Durentin does this. I, I think he does have some experience, Machu. though, on that Is, is Machu on Spear? Yeah, Machu over here, meanwhile, on Daybreaker. He's the one who normally we would expect to see on that healer, but he's going to Daybreaker slide into the bow. Is going to get the purge off, but the E is there for the quiver. Is going to get that one going. Again, it's a good purge by Prince of Death, though. Walk and Klug in him down this choke. You're going to want to keep your eye on Machu, though, as he does have his Daybreaker backup available, but he's choosing not to go hard yet. Looking at this bow, the Impale does connect. It's a lot of pressure onto Red Team Blue is walking them down. It's Klug just getting silenced by Prince of Death, having to roll away. And it's nowhere near his team. Bar Brady, half HP. So is Pigtail over there. And they might get slid through. The roll comes in by the bow, but there is a knockup follow-up. And he is definitely going down. Now these guys stuck on the choke because they have to come back to the, the tent to reset, right? They're going to get slammed. They're going to lose one more member and reset against this team. Drenton also, also popping his mana potion. Yeah, both teams blue army. So, I mean, they, they definitely know each other. Cess Flolo is a player we've seen a lot uh, in 5v5s. Not a lot recently, though. So interesting to see them come back. I'm also saying Pigtail, because I don't know how to pronounce this name. It is uh, Petit Gill, I believe. Petit Gill. Pigtail. <laughs> no, I, I was just pointing out that that blue army who is... Uh trying to win a season apparently purchased a bunch of teams then yeah yeah they uh it's the last season you know in quotes for blue army so we'll see how this one goes for them i'm sure you know if this is the the season they want to win they they'll definitely be competitive in it so yeah they're already ahead by a good bit um all those purchases that they've made and all the castles that they've been able to secure they also have quite a bit of territory and uh pretty impressive that the freemen are actually in second place as well. These guys are really doing work to try to secure a lot of points for all members of Blue Army and squad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Blue Army not only has one, but they also have two, right? So they're ch they're chilling on the season rankings right now. But uh, the thing is, I, I wonder who's going to contest them, right? Like, are there guilds and alliances of players who are saying, no way we're going to let Blue Army win, Chosen, or no? Is that not what's happening right now? Well, I, I hear that there are a bunch of people who want to stop Blue Army, but it's easier said than done. And I honestly mm -hmm. think that it's more important to what we would consider the coalition to break PoE's hold of the Outlands than to stop Blue Army from getting first. Now, there may be a couple of guilds out there that may have some strong feelings about this, such as June. But I think that they're all looking more to to break the hold in the Outlands of these two uh, mega powerful groups known as uh, PoE and Squad. So right now they are running around as Lazy Eye, but it is uh, I still consider them to be members of the Squad uh, Coalition, which is hand in hand with the PoE Coalition, which consists of many different alliances, all working together to secure that empire that we see running through the west and south of the Outlands. 
Yeah, and one of the ways that Blue Army and a lot of people who want to win the season are going to be able to do it is by having really good Crystal League teams. Right here, it doesn't actually matter which Crystal team wins because both of these teams are watching are in Blue Army. But they will be getting a nice little win here, and this will get them a level 5 token so they can fight in 20 minutes for the level 5s. Blue team is playing very aggressively, though, keeping these guys at 10 choke. They're not letting them even come up that much. All three range DPS right now for the red team have three bars, and Klug is not able to heal them as much as he wants to. This guy has to full heal, or Machu is going to come running down that choke. He actually gets canceled when he wanted to by Seslolo, but there it is now, and he, he's going to go for the kill into Karjin, and this one is definitely over this match here. It's a rough one for uh, this team, but I assume it's much it's much more of a pug from the Sesflolo and Karjan team than it is the uh, Tutankhamen Dorenton well, team. Well, we have here. we have two good teams facing off against each other. Why don't we go check out somebody we have not seen in quite a while? Let's go check out Rafikon. Ooh, Rafikon Uzbek Ankh over here against Solace and his new team. Solace recruiting you, Mom, Dai 2, Bean as his melee DPS, Nentians as the tank. It, it, this team is, I think, going to do very well. Solace's team taking this a little is break. The, these right guys now. are the, the team that we were really excited about a couple of seasons ago. Actually, I would say it's a season ago now, not a couple of seasons. We go back to what was it, season 11? These guys were pretty good. Rafkin's team, yeah, they were very, very strong, right? Came in as almost no names, almost getting very far into a tournament, right? Very, very strong team. I think they have one, looks like one change from that team we used to see them playing with. But Which, yeah, we, the we know this Rafkin team is great, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're down two kills. But this other team, right, the Sun team, is a very new occurring team, right? Just formed Solace's team who got third in the tournament. Uh, maybe fourth, I actually kind of forget. That was team it, actually it, it is taking was, uh... a break right now. Uh, ATK Logic's was team. the was the uh, one they replaced yeah, here 12. with ANCQ, mm -hmm. and ANCQ is if you're gonna have to replace a member on your team, putting an ANCQ ain't a bad replacement. I would take that one any day of the week. They're still playing the old school playstyle too with the four chambers. Just like forced to run out of there. Minsu on the Druidic staff. Meanwhile, looks like Uzbek sticking to his roots also on Druidic staff. A little bit of difference armor choices though coming in by both of these guys. Chalite does have four chambers up constantly, though, so it's a lot of pressure to this team, but they're doing work right now, keeping Rafkin, Chalite, and Uzbek very low. Uzbek forced to go very far up to get the hots on his team. Watch out as Rafkin is about to get slid through by Beamed on those Death Givers. Is going to find that kill, but honestly, the guy needed to go back for healing way sooner. His team did not have the pressure they needed. Ankh forced to use his Cleric Robe, not able to put any pressure on it either, so he doesn't have any defensive if they do catch him. Beamed is looking for something here. His Ankh, 1 HP, might go down, barely gets saved by Uzbek Seed. And now Chalite having to use his four jammers to get out of there alive. But all of them will be able to stay alive. So at least that's something. Yep, still working at it. And, uh... oh, wait. What's happened over here with, with Rafikon? Rafikon's team is sitting tent. Well, he, he just died, so they're regearing. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm looking at two different matches here. Okay. No, I was looking at that. I was thinking I was watching the, the other match. And as you know, I pop around seven matches at yeah. once here. And I, I'm like, oh, what is going on here? Why is he uh, sitting tent? Why is it uh, 62 to 86 here? I thought this was a stomp. That is the other one. Sorry. My bad. Chalite no, swapping to to off Tassic. the Forge Hammers back to the Glaive. Honestly, like it a lot more. Like the Glaive on him a little bit better than I do the Forge Hammers. Especially in his comp, right, with the bow shadow color. I don't think the four chamber dive is going to work out for him. But meanwhile, Bean coming back with the death givers, right? Death giver is not something we've seen in 5v5 in a while, but it looks like it's working for him, right? His team is up three kills and fatality getting destroyed by Umom Dai 2's bow. Just sitting there turning him inside of his cleric robe. That damage amp putting in work and fatality out of this fight. Rafkin finding a really good route up front onto Sauls for the pressure, but Bean and Nentians just diving in on fatality and Uzbek as they were stacked on that choke. It's a double kill on the back line for this team. Ankh is going to die too. They might be able to find one more if they have any CC, but this one's over. Rafkin's team has to run to tent and try to just, you know, save that's the gear. That's going to be it. Yeah, that's going to be oh, it for this one. Oh, Rafkin's dead to dots. They, oh, they aced him. They actually just straight up aced him. Uh, let's go check out Aramis Irons. I'll see if that one's still going on.
This one's a little closer. This is a good team. Bonzo, Bobo, my nerd, and the boys up against Aramis. Zerfax on the bow. You're going to see the Pierce here onto Aramis. Aramis afraid to walk up, though, because this enemy team comp is very strong, especially if Quest gets on you with that hammer. That Daybreaker by my nerd is going to instantly come onto you and purge everything you want to want to keep on you there. Zerfax with a great roll to keep his quiver going as he dodges my nerd's Daybreaker charge. Now King just a little bit out of position there. The geyser has to come in to keep Zerfax and Chicken at bay, but there is the harpoon into the stun onto Zerfax. He could die here if they had any other pressure from King just, but the cleric robe is there. Now the trade is there. My nerd and quest very, very low each. They don't have any CCs. Akata barely gets his cleric robe popped in time, but the healing is being canceled by fat next. And they finally find the kill into quest a really really long fight my nerd oh he almost had the harpoon he wanted as well the red team should probably rush bot if they want to keep in this one but if they don't get that cap soon this game is going to be over fat next knows his team wants to get the spot cap so he's already down here holding the choke my nerd again not able to play the game that he wants to just because fat next is doing a really good job in this front line especially because the enemy team doesn't even have their tank alive yet west just now coming back to this fight the 20 tick is going to come in miner did not hit that uh, daybreaker on Zerfax, so the bow stacks are still there and if you don't hit that when you charge in especially with a daybreaker it's a ton of damage you're going to take he's already down to one bar Zerfax has to roll down choke miner almost able to find that kill but they do finally trade it oh. king just goes down at the same time as Zerfax. bonzo bobo very low so is akata i don't think zakata has his player group either the geyser did not connect in time, but the damage is surely there. Half a bar to his name, they get the kill. And that's hey, we got to hurry up and head over to Cargera really quick because we're about to see something that I think everybody wants to see really quick. It's uh, it's Liette forsaken, SBI's bias, and uh, Aurelia taking on Bodeville, Cargera, and it looks like it's going in favor of the uh, the the barbecue boys. Well, yeah, done. dude. This team, Liette's team, I absolutely love these guys, man. It, it, these guys did so well in the tournament. They're out but here. They, came they just in traded second, one for right? one. They lose. Yeah, they came in second. They've just mm -hmm. lost two members, though. They killed Cargera, but ended up dying two people. They will get this 20 tick, but they might even lose another as Bodeville rolls to execute they did. Liette. Nicely done by Bodeville. They have time, though. They have a lot of time to play with, right? 51 points here up. You have 50 seconds till you get 20 ticks. Just get your boys back alive. No reason to greet out right now. SBI is biased trying to. I'm not sure why. It's just him and Forsaken here. He should really reset so his team can go top. But he's going to keep going. Wants to cancel Grafis. He is going to find the cancel, but now he needs to come out of there alive. He's half HP as he's running back. Forsaken is there to heal him, but I don't know if the pressure is good for him to have done that. Actually, it's definitely really good because Cargara was never even in this fight. Cargara just now came back through middle. This is a really good play by SBI. Lucrative does not have Flingy just he's on Bow Veil. Actually, he's on the Daybreaker as well. Carvenant on the bow looking at Liet, but Liet, one of the most experienced bows there are in 5v5s. His positioning is very strong coming off that tournament in that second place victory. And th these guys were confident they would have beaten Cargara's team. So I'm sure they're looking into it. They do have the Daybreaker Purge for Shekri's uh, Cleric Robe, and they will find that kill. And now without a healer, this team is going to drop for sure, but Liette gets traded. But again, red team doesn't have a healer, so all blue team has to do is just stay alive for a little bit longer, and they'll end up winning. They get one kill onto Carvin, and looks like Cargera's next, and any kill now ends the game in favor of blue team. Looks like they're taking out Bodevale for it, and they just ended up beating Cargera in a level 4. 12 mm. to 9 kills to death. Close. Uh, wow. Not bad. I, I like that. Doom. Do we know Doom, Tazic? new guild looks like in squad so uh, uh i'm not sure what that's about but you'd think that if you had a guild in squad you might want to just push them right over to blue army and push yeah, those why? points that's what i was gonna say why would this team just be in blue army for the points if they're in squad right hey we can go watch out uh your boy wee wee what do you mean my boy i don't even know you know wee wee who that from oh it's Gaffinator's Gaffinator's team. yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, wait i just got here and they lost Oh, it's over? All right, when I got mm. here, they Grebo? lost. To me. Do you remember Grebo? Or YouTube Asian Tan? Yeah, let's see, let's see. 13 to 4 over here. 45 seconds away from a 20 tick for this Zorn team. What the hell? This is super close. Grebo eating his food, looking to breach this south choke. If they don't get a cap in the next 30 seconds, blue team is going to end up losing. There could be another minute if they do get a cap. Grebo and Synixia diving YouTube Asian Tim, but the role is there. He's also playing the old school Druid Robe Hots build, so he should be able to hop people up in time, but he he was off screen from his bow and didn't heal him one time. 
Asian Tan not healing his bow for the death will give that one to Zorn. Some great level fours right there. And I got to say, seeing play and B come in there and uh, take out Cargara's team is... I wish we started watching that from the start, Chosen, because that was a match we didn't get to see in the finals of the tournament, right? No, we didn't. Liet, Liet had said, right? He said, if Plan B goes against Sun, right? If we go against Cargara, we will win. That's what Liet said, just straight up fact. And we didn't get to see that happen. So interesting to see them come in. Well, and, uh, uh, we, we watched... Uh them go against actually against Alavis's team there and uh, he's a little bit upset that I uh, referred to the wrong team as the beach barbecues yeah beach barbecue study group didn't end up just destroying plan B in the finals but yeah, that was did. also something Liet predicted he did in fact say if we go up against beach barbecue it's all over so dude I, I have a lot of respect for Liet as a player man uh, after that tournament I think that team did really well yeah, I, I have to say that was our most exciting and most unexpected out. Not the the eventual winners, but the entire tournament had a lot of unexpected engagements throughout, and it was awesome to watch. If you have not seen the CLC for season twelve, definitely go back and check that thing out. It was it was easily the best tournament that we have had. It was absolutely phenomenal, and congratulations once again to our winners, the Beach Barbecue Study Group. I, I did such get that right, right, all of us? It's the, yeah, it's the Beach Barbecue game. Study Group. I have mm -hmm. no idea what that means, but uh, you should have been studying, not barbecuing. Oh, quick. Durentin votes out the door. Let's go see. We have, right now, Durentin is going in. That guy, oh, Zerfax getting a lot of energy. Oh, someone's dropping their energy onto Zerfax right now. Well, you have about four more seconds till we have to pick one. Maybe the two are facing this off against like each other. This is looking like a Zerfax other. one. No, they're not. They're not. This is looking like a Zerfax to me. That thing definitely won. It's 75 to 50. All right. Let's go check it out. Fatnix and Zerfax oh, this over one. here with Free James Chicken coming up against Sabata, Pedro. I, I made this. This is a decent team to throw up against. So okay. should be a, at least a fair fight. You know, I don't think that either team is like insanely stronger and going to win for sure than the other. I would probably give this in favor of Fatnex, though, as I think Fatnex team did very well in the level four. Wow. I like that uh, Zerfax, too, is still just sticking a bow. He's not really going Jeez. for the one-hand frost, but he is going to get flung right out of his channel. Meanwhile, Pedro and Free James getting 1v1 over here. Sabata doing God's work, keeping him alive, though, and now this is a 2v5 collapse. They're looking at Free James. The stun is there. The healer needs to get up here. Where's the grave guard? The seed is there, but he is going to get flung. The seed is going to proc. Where, where, where is it? It's, he's still so low. Get up that choke. My man needs healing. The breeze, not enough. They're not going to be able to save him. Free James is going to fall. This guy just it is not even overextension so much as it is when enemies are collapsing on you. You should probably run back to your healer. Uh, but now blue team has to run down this choke and they might even be able to fling fat next. They are going to find the fling impale poison potion as well. No healer there. This guy should be going down. Wait, they're, they're able to keep Fatnex alive, and now they could turn this, maybe, because Free James is up. Pietro is getting that cap, and I Mage and down the choke. Sabata as well. They could look for something. There's Zerfax going to roll the fling. Is going to pop his Cleric Robe, looking to turn around some damage. Red Team doing a really well job of actually just keeping this front line in check, though. Fatnex not able to play his game like he was in that level four. It's a two-man geyser, though. Free James looking at Pietro. He's doing a good job of uh, isolating the bow, at least, though, and making sure that guy isn't really hitting anyone else but him. So the damage isn't really insane from this bow right now and that's a lot of pressure in the back line i mage and still stun up he is going to find the stun to petro but he cleric robe immune it the res pot at one hp he is going to fall and now blue team is able to find the turnaround again no one capped mid so they are able to just keep fighting here without anyone losing a 10 tick and with zabata going down if they get this fling here could be disastrous for the red team but they won't find anything that only a judy boot the stun comes in to prenatum and relic they're still fighting here but they did send uh, aramis to go get that mid cap so they're in a good spot. That was a great, great two quick engagements right there. Very back and forth. An update for Alivas on the Durenton match is currently 149 to 111 in favor of Durenton and the boys. There you go, Alivas. Aramis going to insta mage sandal blink. I don't really like that play by him, but he is stun poison potion. Chicken going to have to roll for that cleanse. 
And now the fling is there, but the fling was caught on that crystal wall right there. That could have been really bad for Chicken. Chicken is going to walk away from Prenatum, who is going to be targeted by Xerfax here on the bow. The double stun, triple stun, in fact, is there for the cleanse as well. I'm aging the target right now of Fatnex, while uh, Free James actually choosing to not stick onto Pedro. Pedro able to do a lot more damage in this fight, because Free James is here on that south side instead. Not really just purging the bow on cooldown. Fatnex missing his Iron Breaker. Is it going to be stunned up here in this corner? He might have Res Potion available for him. He's just going to stun his way back to his team. The cleanse is there by Pedro, though, so the damage is still there. I'm Asian popping his Cleric Robe as well to live Zerfax. Chicken getting 1v1 by Pre-Tom. Has to roll back up the choke. As Free James is going to get stunned again. And again, this, this red team, Reliker, is doing a really good job of just holding Fatnex and Free James, like, captive. He's not letting them run away in their back line. As much as this team was, at least in that last match. Fatnex forces his potion, might fall to the poison potion, is going to get the healing he needs, and they trade the enemy team's tank. Imagine should not have Cleric Robe, so he's going to fall as well. Judy Boot knockup is there, and they should find Zabata. There is no stun available, but the Cleric Robe immunity is going to end up soon. No, they won't find him. Red Blue team, though, this Elevate squad, doing a really good job of keeping the caps in their, their name, though. 20 to coming in for them again. And I think Fatnex got a lot of loot. My man's heading back to the tent. But uh, Sometimes the death you gotta do that. Aren't, you know, you the gotta death be timers careful. aren't long enough, though. Yeah, he had to come back way too early. He really wanted to, though. He mounted on the surf cloud. He was running for the tent. But these guys already came back. Has to put the uh, weight on shoes if he wants to stay in this one. Weight on shoes. Never a good sign, my man. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good fight. I'm gonna have to look at that one. Stun there. Just misses I'm Agent, actually, though. Pre-Tom looking for a fling. Aramis playing very aggro here on this curse. The Dark Matter is going to be bouncing onto Relicor. It's onto Zabata and Imagian. Free James should have turned around right there. They could have gotten something on Zabata. He misses his Impale as well. He has to get out of there. It's a lot of damage coming in by Pedro. Pedro going to cleanse that stun. Is going to get knocked up by Fatnex. No purge available right now, but the knock up into the purge as everybody misses it. And Pedro just has free range right now. Aramis caught in a bad spot. Has to blink away. It's a great blink, but he gets swapped right back into the thick of things. He has to come up that choke. Great positioning by him. And now blue team. Yeah, their positioning is good, but they're out pressured right now. And Fatnex going to get flung away from his healer. Does not have potion available. Half a bar to his name. The healing is there for now, but he has to slide back. The impale does connect. And he's just running from the enemy team. He can't afford to get hit right now. The seed did heal him up, and Zerfax didn't deter it, actually, after that swap. Just wants to put out as much damage as he can. Turn some pressure onto this red team. Free James not choosing to go down the choke. Instead, sideswiping it, and he will find Imagine. Great play by Zerfax to keep hitting that guy. They're going to catch these guys running to tent, and they should have some stuns by Fatnex ready as well in a few seconds to maybe catch another one out. They have three caps, so they could technically keep going. The geyser does miss. The stun misses as well, so Fatnex not able to find what he wanted. But great playing right now from Zerfax and these guys. They're playing very well. But even though it's so close, they're able to find the, the edge at the end of the fights. These guys are very good, and they're doing a great job of just keeping themselves right where they need to be for the range. I'm actually really surprised he was able to get back in time, though, for that, for that fight. Yeah, I'd love to see Fatnex just run back to tent, dude. This guy's been looting everything. Oh, I made an art use his role. This could be bad. Fanix kind of probably wants to go here, I would imagine. So it's a free kill almost. But it is going to be up soon. He was not able to go when he wanted to. Instead, he's looking at Pedro. The purge does connect. But Pedro will have another E in the tank. He rolls the second purge. So he's chilling for now. Unless Free James uses his Daybreaker on him. It's a lot of damage about to come in from this bow. Judy comes in in a very aggressive spot. Free James is going to slide in onto Pedro. And then right back out to safety for that purge. I don't think it was worth it, though, because of how delayed he did that after the cast of the, the enchanted quiver and now the free james is not able to stay where he wants to and aramis is going to be getting hit for it because the positioning by blue team is not where it needs to be sabata a little bit out of position as well has to pop his cleric rope get some hots on his boys aramis no defensives left has to walk up this choke though pre tom is going to find the impale but i don't think he has a roll into a fling available relic are still tunneling onto aramis and this is really bad they're, they're tunneling really hard up this choke they're going to get returned and here it is pre tom's a four-man stun I imagine stuck up the choke. Pre Tom, the target right now. The geyser to connect onto Zabata and him after the roll as well. It's a ton of pressure this blue team has. They're looking to stun him up. Free James choosing the Daybreaker the wrong way. They could have just executed Zabata if he just did it the opposite direction. They will still find him though. And now they're looking for maybe one more to finish off this match. Pre Tom might be the one who's going to get geysered here. The Dark Matter doing a lot of damage. Fanning's going to get swapped out though, and they're not going to be able to find anything else. 
Oh, Reliker actually stunned right outside choke. Pretom actually rolled up at one HP to fling Fatnex into the tent. He is going to be able to GD boot right out of it, though. That was almost disastrous for him. Uh, but 145 to 7. Score is 5 to 1. I think Red Team is probably going to sit tent. Even if they don't, this match is definitely over, I think. Yeah, it looks like this one's going to be done, too. A lot of them are just as one-sided as this. I'm going to keep popping around to see what I can find, but I don't have a lot left for you guys. Yeah, Rafi Khan's match is over as well. Liette is over. Uh, Drenton is over. But we still have Aramis irons for um one more rotation as it's 145 to 7. yep that's the one we're watching now one we're these guys like, that's not that's to it. sit tent sabata is looking to heal up the boys maybe they could get two kills and, and two caps but I, I don't think it's gonna happen in 15 seconds right aramis does have cleric we're just gonna walk it out and all the blue team has to do here is honestly afk and they win zabata goes down no healer for red team there is a judy boot knock up into i think a stun coming up soon by fat next there it is pedro does have mercenary hood so he will live, and I mage and should live for this one second. He will, and that's GG. Great little level five. Really well played by Fatnex, Zerfax, Free, James, Chicken, and Aramis as well. Very, very well played. We have uh, Gwes still going on a level three. The, the hell is Gwes doing on a level three? This T oh they're playing oh, okay they're just having some fun with it it looks like they're up against Kiki Win and the boys but Minerd on the Unbridled Fury looking for some damage King Just is on the I think a broadsword I don't believe it's a Claren blade uh, I mean I mean they're just having some fun with it here well Kiki uh, Kiki Win and Molek are both very good players I don't recognize some of these other guys but you know there are some good players on the other team here the Kiki Win it's Molek a and Moramin played together for a while I think. Um, but I, I don't recognize the other guys. I, I will say, though, weird to see both of these teams in a level three, right? I would have imagined right. at least this, this Quest team was, would be in a five. I, I'm pretty sure we one. just watched them in a four. You know, we're, we're in week one. You know, it, it happens. But we're you know, in week sometimes two. It takes a... they, there, was, there were crystals last Tuesday. They could have won some okay. tokens then. Uh, but in any case, it's a three-man stun by my boy Quest. Minder not able to get there in time for a little pop-off. Three-man, but he's just auto-attacking. Kiki went to death. The res pot already has to be used. Worthrenus might just get insta-clapped by King Justin. Him, the Judy does not connect on everyone, but the stun does. It's a double cleanse, though. Minder looking to chain slash his way through everybody. He's waiting, though. Did I call them Unbridled Furies? Those aren't Unbridled Furies. <laughs> Those are black hands. My bad on that one. Ah, uh, but... This one is going to go in favor of this blue army team here in about 10 seconds as they are going to find victory with the three caps. They might lose Bonzo Bobo if there's a lot of damage onto him, but I don't think so. The Stalker did connect, but there's not any pressure. Meanwhile, Gwes and Minard looking at Kiki win. They did knock him back with the black hands, but it's not enough. All right. Let's see who we got over here. I have one more... Um match that's still going on let me give you a name just a second edox in chat over here fighting for conflict who i hear are going for crystal this season Ooh. okay okay actually that oh edox almost goes down there they barely got saved i, I wondered um is Durenton and the guys still in conflict or who are they playing for now mm, i don't think they are Damn. Lars, tw Lars 24 in the back not able to heal mercy goes as he falls down they were 3v1 by this hammer ah uh, they probably got bought by blue army for some points this season yeah Frick's gonna fall as well. I wonder if the the purchasing of that team was actually for not points, but to help conflict get crystal. That could be a big uh, conspiracy, maybe. What it is even five v fiving fiving today with Pizza Dad and King what Vega? Did? Yeah. Oh damn. That's a blast from the past, right there. That's kind of crazy. I don't think he's gonna be in a, a high level <laughs> one, but you know, hey, it's it's good to see these guys coming yeah, back. But Good guy from the days, old, you know? Yeah, you were uh, in uh, Money Guild with us, right? Yeah, yeah. 
back 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 before they were season you know week one of release what a great player you know good gvg oh, yeah, back then. Sure. enjoyed enjoyed beating him very much but it's so. changed so much since then it's got to be a, a <laughs> yeah, bit of a completely a change for these guys i mean yeah if you haven't played since before like season one right there were so many visual changes as well that things just don't even look the same right like curse looks entirely different now than it mm -hmm. did back then swords entirely different than they were back then and i think what it was a sword player if i remember right well i mean you know curse just had one thing to do back in the day i it didn't even have sickle. Like, it, it, yeah, I mean, the way that dots look changed, pierce. the armor pierce. But yeah, the armor pierce now looks crazy. Back then, it was literally a red beam. Uh -huh. So that, that's completely different. You never play demonic anymore, which I think is crazy. I would love to see demonic combos coming back. But uh, it's a lot of changes from back then, you know? And not just to the combat, but to the game in general. Albion's done a lot, and they are continuing to do so. But we can't talk about any of that. Speaking of changes, though, I, I just saw something on Reddit that I wanted to sort of mm -hmm. get in before we go, unless you have something. Uh, oh, I know what you want to show. Go for it. Go for it. This was really line. cool. I saw this, and I'm excited to see it again. Go show up the Big Lebowski. So, uh, as you guys know, Sun won the last season, and the season winner gets to decide what the statue is they uh, display in the Conqueror's Hall, right? These... Uh, statues that you can see here, da, 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 these ones, right? This, for example, is the Elevate one from Season 9. And I don't know if it's real, I haven't checked it out, but it looks like somebody posted the, the design that's on the test server for the Sun one. Oh, look at this, dude. Like, what? That's good. That's a really good one. I mean, yeah. it's full screen, let me, it's bigger. I like it. Like, it looks cool. What is this? Like a dude? halfway on the throne with a beard mug and <laughs> leaning on a grove keeper with these sandals <laughs> what <laughs> it's pretty cool people are getting really creative with what they're asking for for these statues and i love seeing it it's pretty cool for gamer tads dude they enjoy chilling on a, on a beer you know a nice cold one and with the boys uh, that looks great like though. thor and endgame cool, yeah nice now, I wish instead of the Grove Keeper, there was some like DJ equipment down there. But Oh, oh, DJ uh, equipment doesn't work in Albion. <laughs> rough throwback there, Tazik. Rough throwback. Anyway, I just saw that. I, I noticed we didn't get it in on the Daily Show, so I wanted to put it out. Yeah, I think no, that's that, a cool statue, man. Really cool statue. That might be my new favorite statue, to be honest. I like it. I like it a lot. You know what else I like doing? Pulling a raffle for the boys. Yeah, and it's uh, Raj Fadge of Zen has won the raffle, as has Domin Happy. Uh, and you guys need to whisper me to claim your prizes. Uh, so somebody in chat was asking what the screenshot is. If you don't know, in Albion there are seasons, right? They last for, uh, I believe, a little bit more than three months or something. Three months about that. And so when you win a season, like the guild, if you win a season, you get uh, a little bit of an homage to you put in the game, right? A, a nice statue, you know, has your guild banners on it. You can customize, you can send in basically like how you want it to look, you know, things like that. And they look sick, right? There's a, there's a haul of all of them that you can go and check out. Uh, and I, it shows you every season winner uh, for the 12 seasons that there were. And uh, Suns will be added soon. That's what you were seeing in that screenshot. And our winners have claimed their prizes. Thank you guys very much for watching today. It's been a fun day. It's really great to be back here after a little bit of a vacation. I'm looking forward to season 13. The first show of the day was the War Report, and it was a full hour of constant ZVZ. So if you like watching ZVZs and you like watching large-scale action, do tune in tomorrow because I believe that this war will be continuing for quite some time, as it seems like half of the server has decided to attack the other half of the server. And it's been fire.